Could the solution to this lie within? According to the New York Times, more than 100 Facebook employees have joined an online group called F Beers for Political Diversity after a senior Facebook engineer wrote in an internal post this. We are a political monoculture that's intolerant of different views. We claim to welcome all perspectives, but are quick to attack, often in mobs, anyone who presents a view that appears to be in opposition to left-leaning ideology. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee joins me now. Governor, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Cheryl. Good to be here. And I'm sure Facebook and Google <laughs> are monitoring everything we say. I'm sure no they doubt are. About it. I'm sure they are. Well, let's say a lot then. Look, you know, I, I was a technology reporter out in San Francisco for years. I uh, worked in television out there. And, and look, living out in Northern California, yes, it's very liberal. I mean, it's it's saved the honeybee. It's saved the, the plank of wood that's floating in the ocean. I mean, this is and that's this is Mountain View, California. These 100 Facebook employees are in the minority, frankly when it comes to wanting to have all voices included. Do we need to regulate Facebook? I mean, that's the last resort. There are three options. One is that they would clean themselves up, they would become more transparent, and they would operate with a level of integrity that, quite frankly, I don't think anybody believes they really operate with, and including those employees at Facebook who openly say it's a monoculture. That's one option. The second option, they're going to get their britches sued off. Somebody's going to sue them for antitrust. Someone's going to perhaps sue them for making illegal campaign contributions, because if somebody can show that they are spiking the news in order to favor a particular candidate or party, that is a campaign contribution. You want to talk about Russian interference? What about interference of the social media giants who are manipulating the information people get largely that will determine how they vote? That's huge. Well, the third option is the government will regulate them. The, and frankly, maybe. I don't think anybody wants that. Right. But it may happen. Well, it, it, it absolutely might. It actually, you know, there's a UCLA professor, yes, I said UCLA, that actually agrees with your point. And this is from uh, Tim Groling. He said, look, um, w this is relatively a huge power these companies have over the masses, over the American public, over the global public, if you will, and that they're unregulated is a concern. It, it ought to be a concern because of the power that they have. And the question I've been raising for months, have they moved from being a social media platform for entertainment and sharing recipes and, in the case of Hillary, you know, sharing wedding plans and, and yoga classes, or has it become something more like a public utility? And, and if a public utility starts delivering electricity uh, or water differently to people who are Democrats than they do Republicans, you clearly have a problem. That's really kind of where this is all headed. And mm -hmm. that's why the government would perhaps have a stake in stepping in and saying you can't just operate uh, without some type of oversight and regulation. Mm -hmm. I think we're headed there. Larry Kudlow told our own Blake Berman, as he just reported, that, you know, we're going to look at it, meaning we don't really know. It's going to take some time. Uh, but, if, but if you go back to the 2016 election, the Russians did take advantage of social media. They used Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, yeah. even Snapchat. They used it all to, many say, manipulate our, uh, our election here in this country and, and several elections in several states. And they're still trying to do it now. Are these companies not doing enough to, to you know, basically battle back at these hackers? Apparently not. And, and I think it's important to note that there's a difference between putting out levels of news that would skew people's opinion and actually manipulating a vote. There is no evidence whatsoever that anyone like the Russians were able to get into voting machines and change a particular vote. Mm -hmm. The allegation is that by manipulating the coverage and by putting out false information, people had their mm -hmm. uh, voting preferences skewed. But here's the question. We're going to get on to the Russians for that, and we should. We need to shut them down for it. But what if it's happening internally within Twitter and Google and Facebook? And, you know, there's a, there's a saying, hell hath no fury like a senator scorned. And the CEO of Google was asked to come and speak to the Senate, and he said, nah, I don't think so. I'll send in some <laughs> underlings. And that's not going over real well. If he thought that was going to be uh, given a standing ovation, boy, was he ever wrong. Well, I will say this, and, and this should hearten you a little bit. Jack Dorsey from Twitter is coming to Washington to testify. What do you, I mean, how tough do you mm -hmm. think they're going to be on him? 
I think they're going to be pretty tough, but they're also going to show some respect to him because he did show up, and that means something. And by the way, Jack Dorsey, there's some issues at Twitter we think mostly recognize, but he's been pretty honest and forthright, more than many of the CEOs, in saying uh, we tend to lean left. And I thought that was refreshingly honest on his part to recognize that the culture within his company is certainly left-leaning. Uh, I don't think anybody says, Jack, we want you to hire an equal number of conservatives. That'd be nice. That'll never happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter mm -hmm. of making the platform uh, agnostic when it comes to politics. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they're certainly under pressure to do so. We're going to see how they respond. It's going to be interesting to hear his testimony uh, when he does appear in Washington. Governor Huckabee, it's great to have you here. Thank you.